Jemaine Cooley and what to look for. What's going on everybody? Welcome to the beautiful world of R22 Low Temp. Some stores still have R22, some are being retrofit to 407A, 448, so the gas is changing but demand cooling is still in play. So today we're going to be showing you what to look for when it goes off in demand cooling. So when you get a service call and your compressor's off, you remove the covers to check all the safeties when it's open on. Here, the demand cooling, you'll see it's 208 LNM, so it's open. I removed the sensor so it can, I can trick it and make it go off on demand cooling. So once again, LNM, the safety, it's open, 208. Some people just reset it and call it a day, like, no, we're good, watch it for a little bit. But I'm going to show you what to look for when you're off on demand cooling. You got the magnet right here. Sometimes inside of it, the magnet's already missing or it broke off. So when you try to hit it, reset it, and it's not going off, that little magnet's actually missing. If it is, you can just go down to the store and grab a little ABC magnet, and that'll work to reset it for now. It's not a permanent fix, but hey, man, at least you can get you back online. So the next thing I do is I look for the temperature probe for the demand cooling module. Here you can see it's right behind it. So the temperature probe, when it gets too hot, it lets the module know when it's time to shoot liquid into the compressor. And when it gets satisfied, when to turn it off. I usually pull them out to check the conditions. Here you can see it's really dirty, and that's going to affect the temperature reading of it. So it might affect it when it's time to shoot liquid in it, or it's getting way hot and it doesn't know because it can't tell from it. So what I would do is I get a little bit of sand cloth and I gently clean the sensor. Not to damage it, but just enough to get it back on. Get all that crud, all that black stuff just off of it and making brand new shiny again. Here you can see that it pretty much looks almost new and it'll get a better reading and it can react a lot more faster. Here you can see the difference between both of them. Here on the demand cooling, I took it off. I just wanted to show you at the bottom where the sensor connects to. Here is where I would be putting the jumper. You'll see it in a little bit to test my uh, liquid injection cylinder right here, the coil. Demand cooling module is in place. So now we're going to check the liquid injection solenoid. So you remove the sensor. You grab your little jumper, you make it. So right now you can see it's not feeding, it's just out. And you want to test if it's working. So you grab a little jumper, you put it in. And you'll see it energize. So in a little bit you can see the frost just going into the compressor and the liquid. I'm going to leave it in there for a little bit so you can see the difference. It's going to turn pretty much white and frosty right now. So by doing this, I'm verifying that the solenoid is working and it is shooting liquid into the compressor. There you go. Took it off, it stopped feeding. So that's good. So let's just say you jumpered it and it's not energized. So next thing you would do is check the voltage, 208. And you want to verify that you are getting 208 to the injection coil. So I'm going to turn around, look at the demand module and see the wiring. So here I'm going to pause it for you. The first two are the module power coming in. S would be the liquid injection solenoid, one side of it. You got LNM, which is a safety switch that's in series. Pretty much you got coming from the low to the high, going through the demand cooling module. It goes to the next one. And the last one, A, is usually wired for an alarm. So now I know blue is one side of my S, so I got to find the other side right now, which would be L2. But right here you can see the conduit going to the injection cylinder coil. And here it's coming from the demand cooling. So that's when you have to kind of just separate the wires, look for them. The power is off by the way, I'm not playing with live wires. So right now I'm just trying to separate the wires to show you in the box. So you have S which is one side of it, L2 is the other one. You can check in the actual module but I just wanted to show you the can. So you put your meter on S and L2 and you have 208 then that um, injection should be energized. If it's not and you have 208, then you have a bad one, you're gonna have to replace it. And let's just say between S and uh, L2, you get no change. 
you can't get to it or anything, then your actual module is bad and you're gonna have to replace it. It does happen, the demand cooling module do go bad. Pretty expensive, but they do go bad. One of the last things I check is if I'm actually low on refrigerant. So I'm getting my actual gas from the header that just kind of tees off to the liquid header going to the cases right here. Let me show it to you. So this whole line is feeding every single compressor. It's just tapping into it. So when you're low, you're not going to get a full column of liquid. You might get a little bit of vapor and it's not enough to cool down the compressors. So going back into the checker to show you, we'll check the side glass going in. And it's actually clear, which is kind of rare, but hey, it's clear right now. It's working for us. Just to follow it, it feeds the cases on one side, then taps off and goes to the compressors. So right there, you can see that it tees off. So you got the liquid header, and then you got the demand cooling header right there. The compressor we're working on, that's the last one in the run, so if anything, that will be the first one to go off in demand code. That's when you have to look for a leak, repair it, add the gas, and get it back online. Now to summarize everything, my demand cooling checklist. First thing I do is I check if it's open on the demand cooling. So LNM open, yep, okay, next one. Check the magnet, it's still on there, it's broken, it's on the ground. If it's on the ground, then I can tell it's had a history because people have been resetting it and breaking it. The next thing is I pull out the probe. Is it dirty? Is it not feeding? Do I need to clean it? Is that getting too hot and that's why it went off? That's one thing. Next one is, is a coil on the liquid injection good? That's when you test it with the jumper. You jumper it out, it's feeding. All right, good. On to the next one. Are you getting 208 to the coil? If it if you do jumper and it's not feeding, that's when you go again into the can, verify, put your meter on S and L2, you're good there. Is the liquid injection feeding? Now, that's if you put in the jumper and you don't see that white frosty, it could be bad. Those do go bad. You might have to replace that as well. And the last one is if everything is good, I check the rack, see if it's low on gas. Because if you're low on gas, you're going to get almost vapor. You're not going to get that full column of liquid to cool it down as much as you can. That's when you're going to have to leak check, find it and repair it, top it off and you're good. I only do that when it's multiple demand coins off, like the three out of the four compressors is off. Then that's when I really concentrate on the loan refrigerator. And that's my checklist for Devan Cooling, what to check for. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully it gives you a new trick or two. Leave that like. I appreciate it.